welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for letting me be part of your day. If you are a regular listener, I assume that this program is encouraging you in your walk with God and your knowledge of the Word of God. I hope that this program is helping you to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only strengthening your knowledge about Him, but also encouraging you to tell the gospel to people that do not know Him. If you're a new listener, Thank you. Please stay tuned. And right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Galatians in chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Just this week, we began a study in this book of the Bible. If you can, open your Bible and join me there right now. Galatians chapter 1. This week, our focus has been on this singular question. How would we introduce Jesus Christ to other believers? (laughs) I didn't say lost people. I said to other believers. We've already admitted that the question seems strange, but nonetheless, that is what we see happening in the opening verses of Galatians chapter 1. But frankly, the more I've been studying and thinking about these verses and their question, the more value I've placed on the, the need to rehearse the doctrine of Christ with fellow believers, not just from the pulpits, not just in our Sunday school classes, not just in Bible studies, but over cups of coffee uh, as we're out and about together. If you have a fellow believer that you work with that goes to a different church while you're together, talk about the doctrine of Christ. Who? he is, why he died on the cross, why we trust him. Now today, we're going to complete our look at the introduction of Jesus, the opening five verses. Starting tomorrow, Lord willing, we will begin to introduce not the Son of God, but the salvation of God to saints. But right now, I remind you that we are our calling from Christ here is to introduce Jesus and his salvation to those who still are lost in their sin. That's our calling. That's our great commission. Now, while our passage talks about introducing Jesus to fellow believers, our calling is to introduce Christ to the lost. To help us do that, we here at Bible Tracks Incorporated publish a number of good gospel tracks. Uh, Remember the word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It refers to a written, clear presentation of how to receive Christ as Savior. Our tracks explain why a person needs Christ as Savior. One of the tracks that's very, very popular that we publish is in my hand right now. It's entitled Transformed. It's a true life story about a man named Don Price who Well, God found him when he was in prison for breaking the law. God saved his soul. God turned him around. Well, God transformed his life. That's where the title comes from and turned this prisoner into a preacher of the gospel. He had a powerful ministry. I want you to get this track, Transformed. It's a great track for men. We use it a lot in prisons. A lot of prison chaplains use it. This track talks about God's power to take broken lives lives and make powerful servants of Christ out of them. If you're struggling with that, why don't you get this track and read it yourself? Now listen, at the end of the program, my announcers are going to come on and tell you three ways by which you can tell us your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, we will send you absolutely free of charge a full packet of all of our English gospel tracks. And it will be this one, Transformed. You'll be ready for that. Get a piece of paper, get something to write with, and jot down a way of communicating with us, and let's become partners in the gospel. And if you'd like to more, know more information about uh, this ministry and how you can help us take the gospel around the world, we would love to talk to you about that as well. Right now, come with me, please. Galatians chapter 1. I've been reading the opening five verses this week. Let me do that one more time. Here's what it says. 
Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who, speaking of Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We have begun a study in the book of Galatians. Our focus all this week, as I said, has been on verses 1 through 5. And I've used four words, all beginning with the letter R, to help us form an outline to lay out what I see taught here in verses 1 through 5. Now, so far, I've talked about the resurrection. That's my first R word in verses 1, 2, and 3. Yesterday, I talked about the word ransom based upon the opening line of verse 4. Today, let's tackle words number 3 and 4. Let me tell you what they are right now. My R word number 3 is the word reason. My R word number 4 is the word result. Okay, come back to verse 4. Uh, this, we're going to talk about the reason. Let me, let me read verse 4 again. It says this, who gave himself for our sins... Now, do you see the next word? It's the word that, T-H-A-T, that, a reason is about ready to be given to us, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. When Jesus went to Calvary, he had a purpose. He died there to pay a ransom. He died to pay for all our sins, and his one-time death is sufficient for all sins for all time. That's what we read here. That's why we read in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. And the tense of the verb there says there can't be any more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. But now come back to our verse here, verse 4, because now in the second half of verse 4, we see another reason for his death. Christ died to, there's a D word there, deliver us from our sin. Do you remember over in Matthew chapter 5 when Jesus said that if you're right, I offend you, you are to do what? Remember what it says? Pluck it out. Well, the word deliver here in verse 4 and the words plucked out over there in Matthew 5 are come from the same Greek word. They translate the same Greek word. If I were to turn over to Acts chapter 7, as Stephen is giving his defense, Stephen the deacon is giving his defense uh, there before the Jews, he's talking about the history lesson of the Jewish people. And he talks about how God delivered, that's the very, very word that's used there, delivered the Jews out of Egypt. He used the same word that we find here and translates it to the same English word there. I go through these Bible references simply to help you and I understand what he means by deliver. When he says to deliver us from this present evil world, he means he's come here to, well, if an eye is plucked out, it is no longer functioning as part of the body, right? The body no longer controls it. The eye is lost to the body. When the Jews were delivered from Egypt, they were no longer under Egyptian control. They were lost to the Egyptians as being slaves. Egypt could no longer dictate to the Jews one single order. You see, Christ died to do the same kind of work for us spiritually. He delivered us from the world's system. We are no longer going to have to face the fate of of this world. This world is going to falter and fail and be destroyed, my dear friend. That's going to happen in the future, and those who do not know Christ as Savior are going to face the fate that this world... Oh, where will they, what will their destruction be? They will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever and ever. But there's more. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 declares that our present world, it declares it to be an evil world. That word evil means an evil that is not happy unless it's making other things evil. Let me give you an illustration. Think of a bully in the schoolyard. 
He is there making fun of some smaller boy, picking on him, calling him names. But that bully is not content saying hurtful things by himself. No, that bully wants others to get into the act and say belittling things about that weak boy. So that is what, our, my friend, the world system is doing to the people that live in it. The world system with its opinions, with its thoughts, with its well, its hopes and impulses, its aims and so on, this world wants to pollute everything it comes in contact with. This world has an ongoing impact on sinners living in it. It drags them into deeper and deeper sin acts. Just stop and think. I'm 59 years of age. The things that were unthinkable even by the lost people when I was a child in elementary school now are commonplace, and people no longer think that there is sin. What has happened? I'll tell you what's happened. This present evil world has drugged them down deeper and deeper and deeper, not only to th- and it's thinking about sin, but the acts it does. The world system is under the control, under the direction of the God of this age, and that is no one else than Satan himself. Yet, we who are in Christ, we have been delivered from this world's dominating impulse. We, we are now free to follow Christ. Just as the Jews uh, followed Moses out of Egypt into a new land, so believers are led out of the power of sin and this evil world into the power of God, the God of grace, the God of mercy, the God of peace, the God of truth. Verse 4 ends by saying that Christ died according to God's will. Now, friend, let me just give you one more thing here. Look at verse 5. My last R word is the word result. Since Christ has done all this for us as an act of grace, then there's, there's no basis of pride for you and I to have. All I am spiritually is due to Christ. So all glory goes to God who planned salvation, who is the person of salvation and is the power behind salvation and the power that delivers from the wrath to come. In the opening five verses of Galatians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul is moved by the Holy Spirit. It was not just Paul's idea. It was the Holy Spirit's idea to reintroduce Jesus Christ to people who already knew him. Why? Well, beginning tomorrow, we're going to see verses 6 and 7 that there are people out messing around perverting the gospel, confusing people. And well, according to our text here, We're told in verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him. Now, that is not people losing their salvation, but people moving away from trusting in Christ alone to be saved. Now, dear friend, listen to me. We're told here in the opening five verses that Christ arose from the dead. We're told that before he did that, he offered himself a ransom to pay for our sin. He was buried and rose again. And then we're told for a, he gave us a reason to deliver us. You, dear friend, if you do not know Christ as Savior, you can't deliver yourself from your sinful patterns and sinful habits and doing sin. There's a sin nature in you. There's a principle to do sin in you. The only deliverance from that is Christ. That's why he died. He died to free you from the penalty of sin and free you from the dominance of sin. Receive him today. Oh, please, cry out to him for mercy. If you will call upon his name, and call and believe in in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. He will save you from your sin. That's the promise of God, not Mark Smith's promise. That's God's promise. Amen? Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.